Uh, you have started a tour of Great Britain and Europe. How was the first show in, in Bristol? It was amazing. Honestly, it felt really, really good to be back. Um, it was exciting. People were happy. We played a bunch of new songs. And uh, just after, you know, two years of kind of not being able to really do that, it felt really special. Special yeah. as well. When was the, the last show? Two years ago, more or less, or? So we came back, we played, um, we played Slam Dunk, Dunk Festival uh, 2021. Yeah. Um, yeah, but yeah. You know, that was just, we came, flew over, played the festival and then flew back. So yeah, the last, last time we were here was, had to have been 2000, early 2019. Wow. wow. Yeah. A lot of time. <laughs> yeah, long time. Okay. Okay. Um, I have a read, uh, I have read um, some interviews uh, from Derek and, and you in different uh, magazines and newspapers. Um, I pay my attention that um, you wanted to return to your roots and remember why you decide to play in a band. Yeah. Did you manage to do that? I would say so. Yeah, I would. <laughs> yeah. The record's exciting. It's exciting to listen to. It was exciting to make. Um, the songs are exciting to play. And I think last night was a good representation of that because it was the first time that we ever got to play Everybody But You. And excuse me, we played a couple other new songs that aren't even out yet. So people were jumping and they were excited. And I feel like they, they, they feel like this is uh, the old state champs. You know, we're all in we're all getting older and we're, we're like, we needed to kind of reset. So uh, it feels really good. And I think, I think we accomplished that on our new record for sure. Okay. About this song, everybody, but you, uh, when you wrote, wrote it, when you composed it, did you have the feeling of it being a, a future hit? Which song? Uh, everybody, but you. I mean, I think we knew immediately when we wrote it, we, that it was going to be a hit. Um, you know, you don't really get those feelings very often. And I, when we were writing it, it just, everything flowed, everything made sense. It was easy. It's not always easy to write a song. Sometimes, you know, you really have to bash your heads together to kind of get to a, a certain idea. And with that song, it just, everyone agreed. Everyone was like, yes, this is the part. This is the lyric. This is that. And when we finished it, that was the one that I was excited to show everybody. Yeah. Yesterday, you feel that uh, people love this song. Yes. Yeah, it was loud. <laughs> when we wow. played it, it was really, I took one of my in-ear monitors out just so I could hear the crowd and it was loud. Wow. It's amazing. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, a lot of pop, amazing. Yeah. A lot of pom, pop punk bands have changed their music to some may mature, may more ad adult. Do you think that pop boom bands can talk about the responsibility of being parents on the rise in the place of electricity, or should they focus on more fun topics such as parties or sex? I mean, I think that you can have a, a, a mix of both. I, I don't think both, it has, yeah. yeah, it doesn't have to be always all fun, all nonsense. It doesn't have to be all serious. You know what I'm saying? I think that's what's cool about pop punk is because the music is is typically so youthful and energetic and fun. The music is you can you can sing about serious topics if you want. I think Simple Plan is is a very good example of that. You know, they've always yeah. made very fun, upbeat music, but they sing about you know they're getting older, so they're singing about adulthood and whatnot. And, um, yeah, I don't know. I think every song you just kind of reach for something else you, you think like what does this song make me feel and then you write the lyrics about it that's how we work so yeah I, I feel that in in the kings of the new age you talk about relationship about toxic relationships about mental health oh it's, yeah. it's uh you know uh, both seriously at the same time uh funny no maybe it's your your purpose it's something that everyone can relate to you know what i'm saying it's not so specific that you know the listener can't understand what you're talking about but but broad enough to where someone can listen and say oh i've kind of experienced something like this before so i think i i really like i pushed derek to kind of dig down into his heart and like find some things that really meant something to him because when 
when the songs mean something, the, the lyrics are just better usually, you know? Yeah. And so I think he did a great job of that. And we, you know, we kind of talked it out and had like a little therapy session and, and really um, tried to talk about some serious things because we haven't really done that in the past. You know, it's state champs is very just easy to listen to. And with this record, I do think we kind of tried to explore some new topics. Yeah. Hey, I think that you wrote the album in the pandemic. Mm -hmm. Do you think that influenced the lyrics of the song a lot? I don't know. I mean, there, I think there are definitely a couple songs on the record where, you know, we were going through the, the weirdness of that time. Um, yeah. Maybe, maybe that reflected on some of the lyrics, but for the most part, I don't think so. I think it was more um, like what's going to be exciting and fun to sing and play when we come back, when shows happen again, you know? So it was less about like the loneliness and the isolation and depression of kind of the last yeah, few yeah. years, you know, but there's a little bit of that sprinkled in there for sure. Do you feel that a uh, pandemic is the past? Uh, in, for example, yesterday in, in your show, you feel that uh, people don't think about the pandemia is, 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 is the past or not? I don't know. It's hard to say. I think some people have, uh, you know, differing views on it. There were some masks yesterday, not very yeah. many, but um, yeah, it kind of does feel like it's heading in a positive direction and it feels like, you know, it's, becoming normal again to just exist and and do what we always did so to me that's exciting because i really missed being able to perform live yeah great britain was the first uh, country that uh, take off the restrictions mm. and more or less at the same time as usa and do you feel that so many difference uh, between restrictions in UK or USA or more or less is the same? Yeah, I think it's kind of the same at this point because yeah. I went to um, I went to Coachella Festival a few weeks ago and, you know, there was not really any restrictions and there was thousands of people there. Um, yeah, I don't know. I, I haven't been here long enough to really know um, what what the restrictions are, but it doesn't really seem like there are any anymore. So, okay. Maybe that's why we were able to come back. You know, we pushed this tour back a couple times just to make sure that we were going to be able to do it. And uh, now seems like the right time because the world's coming back, I guess. Yeah, yeah. I, the world coming back. <laughs> I feel so. Okay, I have a friend who, who is a huge fan of yours. And he asked me to ask you if you think you will ever create a song in Spanish. I would as, love to. As a, a day to remember, Viva la Mexico is an example. Uh, it's possible in the future. <laughs> so I think so. My girlfriend would be very happy because she speaks she speaks fluent Spanish. Ah, so okay, she, okay. <laughs> asking me to. Learn. Wow, so wow. she could help me with help me, lyrics. Maybe yeah. in the in a future album, you Next you one. can Next you album. can write a, a song, okay? <laughs> for we'll for do, we'll for we'll Latin fa Latin fans, Mexico, yeah, yeah. Spain, and different countries. <laughs> I would love, to. I would love okay. to. Okay. Uh, recently, I have been listening to your discography a lot. I love album Living Proof. It's my absolute favorite. You set a lot of pop melodies. Do you think? Uh, it's an album that could influence any new pop ba punk band that are forming right now. Yeah, I, honestly, Living Proof at, at the time when we put it out, I thought was our best record. And I thought it had some really like really cool, inventive new sounds that we hadn't really been doing before. But it wasn't necessarily the record that um, connected with our fans. Yeah. So I think a lot of new people came in and new people found us through Living Proof, but our old fans, it's not, it's not a favorite. So with this new record, we kind of tried to do a little bit of both. We tried to do, you know, move up the ladder, take a new step, but also kind of expand on like the sound that we did. But I think it, I, I think it's, I think it's like a semi-influential maybe, I guess. It's hard to say. But do you feel that new bands regard you as the reference of Boom pop. I think I think we're one of them. I think we're I think we're one of the, the modern bands that that bands are 
maybe look up to or um, strive to like sound like sonically because I think we've always done really a really great job with the production of our records and the, the sound. Um, yeah. Just, you know, when you listen to a state champs CD, you know, like it's state champs. So I think I, I have heard multiple bands reference like, Oh, I really like the guitars or the way the drums sound on this. So, you know, we want to sound like that. So that's always a really cool compliment to me because we spend a lot of time on it. Okay. My favorite song of this album is Time Machine, in which Mark Hoppus collaborated. Uh, were you surprised by the way Mark Hoppus lived through his illness? Informed uh, at our fans, uh, um, social networks. Uh, for me, I was surprised by, yeah. in, this, in this way, you know? Yeah, it's, it's, it, can, it can get anybody, you know? It can get anybody. So I'm, I'm happy to hear that he's doing well. Yeah, yeah, I'm happy too. Yeah. Uh, maybe in the future, I'll collaborate with you in another song or... That would be cool. <laughs> it was fun to write a song with Mark. Um, It, it, it was, uh, I kind of wish we would have done maybe a little bit more standard, uh, a standard song. It's, it's kind of the one odd, oddball song on our record. Um, but he came in and said, you know, I have a little idea and we just, we wrote on it and it ended up going on the record. But, but I think if we wrote with Mark again, it would be maybe a more pop punk song. <laughs> okay. Another repeat that I, I love is Apparently and Nothing. Could uh, one of your influences of that album be Taking Back Sunday? Maybe. I would say so. That's Taking Back Sunday was always one of my favorite early pop punk bands. <laughs> I don't even think they were really like considered pop punk, but I guess they are kind of now. Um, yeah, I, I love that band. And I still think they're, they influence us to this day. Which bands are your main influences from the 90s? From the 90s, I would say Third Eye Blind is my my biggest uh, my biggest influence as far as like guitar parts and and kind of the feel of my bass. Uh, I, I I reference Third Eye Blind a lot, but I know my band overall loves the starting line, um, which was not a band that ever got huge, but they were very influential to us. Um, Paramore, 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 yeah, was a very very big influential band um green day blink 182 all those all the titans of pop punk uh those were you know the reasons why state champs even exists today yeah yeah for me for me too okay gotta say newfound glory newfound glory yeah <laughs> okay uh, finally uh, the last question uh, three years ago you played in spain in the edition of the download festival of madrid do you have good memories of that day I know that is very hot. <laughs> it was extremely hot, but I, I don't ever <laughs> forget that. I, I, had a, I had an amazing time at Download Festival. I'm a music fan, so anytime that we get to go play a festival and I get to watch bands that I like and artists that I like, it's always really exciting for me. So I've been waiting to come back to Spain, and I don't know what's taking so yeah. long. I really, really want to come back. Hopefully we can see you soon in Spain. Uh, you, you know that you have a, a fan base that uh, loves you here. All right, you're going to have to pull some strings, talk to some promoters and get us over there. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I know that maybe uh, now, uh, in this time it's difficult to, yeah. to promote this because a uh, pandemic make uh, more difficult uh, as uh, bands as you visit our country but yeah. maybe in the future i i feel so that uh, it's possible to to return to spain no i hope so i hope so <laughs> i think i think it's kind of been like that everywhere it's it's a lot more difficult to book a tour to make the financials work to make the logistics work it's just difficult yeah. you know the yeah. world is different so i know i know okay thanks for your time for me it's a pleasure talking with you I know that the new album it was uh, it, it will be a successful and good luck in in the tour. Okay, thanks for your time. I thank you very much. It was nice meeting you. Appreciate okay. you. Okay, thanks. Thanks. Oh,